Amen, amen. Mm. Men, have you done the Alatis issued? <laughs> Praise God. So we're not wasting time. We're investing in marriages. It matters a lot. People don't um, understand how valuable what we do is until the challenge hits them. I told you during the week that um, somebody that I canceled some time ago was telling me that they asked him to bring uh, two point something million for divorce. divorce. And that's not the whole cost. That's just to start the process. You know, so, <laughs> so it's cheaper to work on your marriage. <laughs> uh, it's cheaper. Praise God. Men understand that one. And, be, and beyond the financial um, demands, the um, heartache, the stress, then the children. Hallelujah. You need to under, see, guys, you need to understand how important marriage is. The title of our message today is that it won't come naturally. So if you, if you are just going to put a like title, you can write it down. It won't come natural. Or it won't come natural. Anyone you like, sir. The baseline is that this whole thing we're talking about, it doesn't come naturally. The reason why marriages are failing is that people think that they can do marriage naturally. I know it will fail. That's why the divorce rates are this high. It won't come natural. You need something beyond your natural way of operating. See, marriage threatens Satan. Amen? God believes so much in marriage. We said this yesterday. That's why the first institution he started himself was marriage. Every institution is men that started it. Government was started by men. Schools were started by men. The first one that God himself started was marriage. You need to understand. That's the most authentic institution. And we said yesterday that all the, even church was a backup plan. All the work we do as pastors is the work that parents did not do. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Because you see from Malachi, he said, God said he wants a godly seed from the marriage. Well, I'm, not, I'm not supposed to be the one first teaching you the Bible. If your parents were doing the job, they would teach you the Bible. Is somebody getting what I'm saying, sir? A good marriage, in fact, marriage as a whole, threatens the devil. Threatens him. That's why, if you notice, when God created Adam, there was no Satan. The moment he created marriage, the very next chapter, what happened? Satan appeared. You see, man alone or woman alone doesn't represent the image of God. It is man and woman together that represents the image of God. When it was only Adam, Satan did not recognize Adam. He didn't look like God. If you, know, if you look at Genesis 1, 27 and co, when God, um, um, God created Adam and Eve, he said, male and female made he them, and then he called them Adam. Adam there meant mankind. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, the idea of the image of God is man and woman together. It's not only man, it's not only woman. Only man, only woman is not the image of God. It's man and woman together. So, when it was only Adam, Satan didn't recognize him as the image of God. The moment Eve appeared and they married and became one flesh, the next line, Satan showed up. Because then he could now recognize that, wow, this is the image of God. And who is Satan's biggest enemy? God. So he was seeing the image of his enemy. And he attacked the first marriage and he's still attacking marriages today. So there's a great chance he will attack your marriage. There's a great chance he's already attacking your marriage. Are you here, somebody? Satan knows if he can break marriages, he can break people. We said yesterday that statistics shows that most people that are in prisons, most people that drop out of school, most people that are abused, most of them come from single parent home or broken homes. So Satan knows the power. He knows the power of breaking one home. He knows the power of breaking one home, sir. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I need you to catch a vision for that marriage. If you are single, catch a vision to marry well. If you are married, catch a vision to do marriage well. Because a lot depends on you. Generations after you will thank God for your right choice. I tell the singles, you, you are, when you choose a husband, you're not just choosing a husband for yourself, you're choosing a father for your children. When you choose a wife as a single man, you're not just choosing a wife for yourself, you're choosing a mother for your children. So you need to ask yourself, beyond the attraction you have for this person, is this the kind of man you want to raise your children? Is this the kind of man you want your children to want to be like? Is this the kind of woman you want your daughters to want to be like? Don't just marry selfishly. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? 
So Satan attacks the first marriage. He's still attacking marriages. And you must make sure your own is not one of those that will be casualty to his attack. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? He knows the power of agreement. Listen very carefully, guys. There is nothing on the earth today as powerful as a marriage. Nothing on the earth today as powerful as a marriage. Satan knows this, but Christians don't know this. Nothing on the earth as powerful as a marriage. During COVID, we all learned that businesses can be shut down. We learned that schools can be shut down. We learned that airlines can be shut down. We even learned that churches can be shut down. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are countries where there are no churches. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? We saw life, churches shut down all over the world. Guess the only institution that didn't shut down? Marriage. Satan knows this. Satan knows this. So you, need, you two need to understand it. The strongest institution on the earth today is marriage. That's the strongest. Yet many of us don't take it seriously. It's the strongest. And that agreement you have in marriage is the strongest agreement that exists. It's the strongest agreement that exists. He said, if two of you shall agree as touching what? Anything. Hey, have you thought about that before? That's such a blank check. If two of you on earth shall agree as touching what? Anything. And marriage is the highest level of agreement because that's the only place you can join with somebody's spirit, soul, and body. Most other places you can join spiritually. For instance, in church, we are all joined spiritually. We are not necessarily joined mentally. Is somebody get what I'm saying? That's why all churches are different. Because the way we are thinking is different. In some churches, the way some of you are dressed is too kana. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Sometimes they don't wear earrings. They don't make hair. So mentally, we are not in agreement. Spiritually, we are one. One God. One Christ. One spirit. That's where it ends. Mentally, we don't agree. If you wear an earring, you are going to hell. <laughs> Woman, you wear trouser, you are Jezebel's daughter. Are you getting what I'm saying, sir? <laughs> Even as a pastor, you now have beard. Ah, you are not a pastor of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, as a pastor of Jesus Christ, you must be full shaven. I get what I'm saying. Mentally, we're not together. <laughs> Marriage is the only place where you join with somebody fully. And also join with them physically. It's the highest level of agreement there is on the earth. And Satan fights that agreement. And I tell couples, fight to win the agreement, not the argument. Fight to win What? The agreement, not what? Many couples are fighting to win the argument. And they are losing the agreement. What you are losing is more than what you are gaining. When you win argument and lose agreement. Are you here, somebody? <laughs> I told you yesterday there are seven things I can tell any married man that is either struggling or wants to multiply his rate of success. There are seven things you can do that will change your life. And two of it has to do with marriage. Two or more. First one, treat your wife well. I said yesterday. Number two, always discuss things with your wife. Always share your ideas with her. Get her to be on board. You are tapping into the power of the agreement when both of you are on board, the same thing. If two shall agree as touching anything. Hallelujah. I share the story all the time. I enjoy, I've enjoyed this power of agreement. There's nothing I and my wife have agreed about that has not come to pass. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As long as we both agree. This is why, this is why Satan likes to fight the agreement in your home. It slows down the process. Slows down the success. You can agree about, if you have a wayward child, you guys can agree. They said if two of you shall agree as touching what? Anything. Oh, blank check. What? I mean, who doesn't like a blank check? Blank check. You can agree as touching anything. There's nothing I'm going to agree about that has not happened. Once we agree, all I need to do is to get her to agree. Once we can agree, it will come to pass. Where we live today, we agreed. We couldn't afford it. We just agreed. And we had incredible amount of details we wanted in the house. I'm just giving you examples of how this agreement works and why you must fight for it as a couple. This is why, even as you're a single person, this is why you must marry somebody that is, is compatible with you. So if the person you're marrying, there's already too much disagreement from the beginning. You don't agree about anything. You believe in tithing, he doesn't believe in tithing. You believe in church, he doesn't believe in church. You believe in pastor, he doesn't believe in pastor. And you have already disagreed about everything. You believe in submission to authority, he said nobody can talk to me. Even the pastor you want to go, I mean, do you know what he's doing? They, they, they have all kinds of nonsense arguments. He said, if you know what, I went to one church in, in, in 1982. If you see what they did to me, I swore that I won't go to church again. But this same you, you go to a restaurant, they treat you bad, you go, you still keep going. 
where you walk, they've started at you, you've not resigned. It's only church, they offend you, you leave. Oh, shall the way they shall talk to me. I'm not going to church again forever. I attended one church, the pastor ate all the tight. That's why I'm not going again to church. <laughs> For them to be fake, that means there's original. Oh, I don't know if I can understand. Yeah. So you 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 fight for that agreement. So I said, the house where we're living, we just, we agreed. We said, okay, we want to move to. We're living on the mainland. We want to move to the island. We agreed. We want to live in an estate. We agreed that. We said, we want to live in a place. I play lawn tennis. I said, I want to live in a place where I can continue playing lawn tennis because I used to play in the mainland. Now move to the island. So I don't want to want to live where I can play. We agreed. I said, we didn't have lights. We used generator in the mainland. I said, I don't want this generator life. I'm tired of it. We agreed. We agreed how many gates and exit the estate we have. You know, it looks small, but we agreed specifically what we wanted. Many couples, this is what you should be doing with your time. Agreeing about anything. <laughs> Miraculously, we got the house. When we got the house, guess what? The week we were moving in, they started building two tennis courts in the estate. The week. You, to you, it's coincidence. <laughs> to me, it's not. Because the exit has existed years before we came. But the week we were moving in, they started building tennis court. Two. Inside the estate. Secondly, the week also we're moving in, coincidentally, again, it looks coincidental, but there's no coincidence with God. The estate started 24 hours power. So I've lived in that estate for about six years now. I don't have a generator. For six years in Nigeria, I've never seen generator. I don't have inverter for six years inside Nigeria. You are the one fighting your wife. Just agree. <laughs> don't be angry. Agree what you want. God can create a new world for you. He is one that made the promise, not me. He said, with two of you, DJ, bring the scripture up now. I told you, DJ, where I flow, eh? You are not putting scripture. Me, I will just be flowing. So you'll be putting my scripture. That's how I do it with my church. Sorry. So <laughs> somebody got what I'm saying. That's what God says. If two of you shall agree as touching anything. All the details, exactly. I don't want to waste your time. What other time like this? One time, so many years ago, I told my wife that, honey, let's believe God for a million dollars. Because I just felt one of these days when I'm getting older, I might want to go and resign and live abroad. Tired of this Nigerian stress. That I'm just going to live abroad and be operating from there. That I want to be able to go there and buy a house, cash, when I need it. This was many years ago, not today. About 10 years or more ago, 7 years, I don't know. My wife will not. I said, honey, let's believe God for a million dollars. Now, it wasn't now that I even looked rich. No, I didn't have anything that time. <laughs> I didn't look like this at all that time. And I didn't used to do any business. Not that business is bad, but I was not doing any business. I was just strictly doing ministry, preaching. Because my schedule is really heavy, so I just do ministry. I told her, let's believe God for a million dollars. She said, are we going to be changing our naira to dollars? Are we gonna... There was even no money. I said, I don't know. We had that agreement on Monday. We agreed together. Notice, he didn't say agreement prayer. It's Nigerians that had a prayer to it. Because Nigerians need to reinforce everything. What it says is agreement. Two of you shall agree concerning anything that they shall ask. I said, let me go for a million dollars. We did that on a Monday. We were in the car. We did it on a Monday. On a Thursday or Wednesday of that same week. Same week. Oh. Again, to you it's coincidence. Thank you. To me. It's not. Thursday of the same week. Somebody, one of our church members came to our house. And in the morning, we have never had our bath. Knock at a dog and give me a bag, a perfume bag. I said, you want to come in? They said, no, they just want to drop the bag. And they saw my face because it looked like perfume. It was perfume bag, actually. And they saw my face that I looked somehow because I felt you woke up, you woke me up early in the morning to give me perfume. I have perfume in my room that I'm not even using. So they now told me, Pastor, it's not perfume that is there. I said, good, because I was already angry. <laughs> I need to, Pastor, I need to learn how to manage my expression better. <laughs> because in our work, this pastor work, you must learn to smile even when you don't mean it. But I wasn't good at it that time. <laughs> so they saw my expression. They said, this is not perfume that is there. I said, okay, good. Made the left. I opened the bag. It was $100,000 in cash. Same week, me and my wife agreed we wanted a million dollars. $100,000 in cash is good money in any country. <laughs> it was beautiful. We took picture with it. <laughs> it was fine. I've never seen $100,000 in one place together that time. Are you here, somebody? I can go on and on to the sexes of our children, to how our children will be born, everything was agreed upon. See, Satan is fighting your agreement. He, he, your agreement threatens him, threatens his kingdom. If he can't break you, he will be threatened because of the godly seed you raise, because of the things you do together for the kingdom. Are you here, somebody? 
But the issue is that getting marriage right doesn't come naturally. That's what I'm here to say today in the short time I have. Doing marriage right doesn't come what? Naturally. If you're a single person, you need to learn the qualities. Most young people don't know the qualities to look out for in a spouse. It's so painful. You ask them, what do you want in a spouse? Say, I want tall, dark. There are some tall arm robbers. They are tall kidnappers. That can be the qualities you pick. Many people don't even know their qualities you look out for. They think anybody you meet, you just marry them. No, 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 no. Basic things. If you're a Christian, the person too must be in Christ. When somebody's in Christ, it's not that he goes to church. It's that his nature is changed. He doesn't go to church. Church is him. He is church. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? His nature has changed. So he's not, he's somebody, he's not that he doesn't make mistakes, but you see, the difference between somebody that is born again and somebody that is not, is that somebody that is born again is moving in the direction of pleasing God. That's his direction. He can fall on the way, oh, but he will stand up and what? Keep moving. He's moving in the direction of pleasing God. He's not the person you are trying to convince that mal- malice is not good. You know the kind of person you're trying to convey, you're showing him scripture of, about forgiveness. No, this person already has a relationship with God. He knows what the king... I've never needed to quote scriptures to my wife. We, we both were good Christians and we understood what the Christianity was about. Yesterday I talked a bit about divorce. There is nowhere in scripture. God permits divorce, nowhere. The only, we've said that during the week, um, yesterday, for those that were not here. This is why you're making me repeat what I've already said. The only thing God allows for you to divorce is based on the law of life. Because the law of life comes above the law of scripture. Because you must first be alive to practice scripture. Okay? So we said it that yesterday. The only reason why God permits you to divorce, he says, if the unbelieving depart. Meaning that unbelieving guy or whoever that guy is, is applying his free will to go. He says, if the person goes, because the law of life comes with the law of free will. If the person goes, he's free. Then you are free. That's the only reason in scripture, both Old and New Testament. That God gave for divorce. Or God permits for divorce. Every other thing. God said you signed for this. Say my husband is shouting at me. When you were saying for better for worse. What were you thinking the worst was talking about? What was the measurement of that worst? My husband. He doesn't bring feeding money at all. Good. What? Give us idea of worse. <laughs> my wife is too, is too talkative. My wife is too. Dis- That's what you sign. For better, for worse. If you were enjoying now, you wouldn't have come to meet us. I get what I'm saying. If your husband had bought you a car, will you come and give one tire to a pastor? You will ride your car alone, but when the worst comes, you want to come and sit at the church. It's what you sign. That's what the covenant is. It's what you sign. So this is why you don't enter with anybody. If you're single, shine your eyes well. The person must be in Christ. The person must have good character. I have a book titled, Who Should I Marry? So I dealt with it in detail. I won't go into it. Number one, the person, there are all C's, 10 C's. Number one is that the person must be Christian. Number two, the person must have character. Look, beyond what they are saying, check how they are living. Somebody say he loves you, but is he acting like he loves you? Because we may get confused. Pastor, this guy, he beat me. He shot at me. This man cheated on me. He destroyed me. But he said he loved me. What should I do? <laughs> Don't follow what he's saying. Follow what he is doing. Character. Just because you meet somebody in church doesn't mean they have character. A church is a hospital. <laughs> a church is a hospital. So it's not everybody you meet in church that is godly. <laughs> a church, every good church attracts all kinds of people. If you don't know whether a church is good, there must be 400 people in the church. There must be prostitutes in the church. Jesus' ministry attracted prostitutes. Am I correct or not? Attracted uh, 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 drug dealers and, and tax collectors and criminals. Every good ministry attracts that. So, and some of them are responding to treatment. Some are not responding <laughs> to treatment. <laughs> this is why in our own church, part of the standard is that we ask you to talk to the chief medical officer that has their file. Pastor has everybody's file. Some people he has never spoken to, but he has their file. That's a part of how our work operates. So when you come and say, ah, Mr. John wants to marry me, the pastor will open his file. He joined in 1982. He has not paid tithe one day. He's a thief. <laughs> he has not joined the department. This one won't serve. He is fighting everybody. He joined 30 department in 30 months. He's a quarrelsome person. Yeah, we open this file and see whether he's responding to treatment or not responding to treatment. Hallelujah. That's the work. So, there are 10 C's. I can't waste time on them. So, one, Christ. Number two, character. Number three, counsel. Every good church has a counseling process. Go through counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. 
one of my guys, I saw him. He was in a relationship with one girl. I didn't have a problem with it. Both of them were church members. And one day, I was doing something on his phone. And I stumbled on a text, by mistake, sincerely, on a text the girl sent. But I saw what she wrote. I said, this girl is not saved. She doesn't understand this thing. I told him, you can't marry her. Ah, he said, no, they must marry. And you see, the girl was, was going to travel to America. You see, that's another thing. Men marry for how it will help their life. We see men that marry for love. Men need you before they love you. Women love you before they need you. We said that yesterday. Again, you didn't come. You're making me repeat what I said yesterday. Men need you because the first marriage that ever happened, Genesis chapter 2, it was based on need. It's not good for man to be alone. So it's not that men fall in love based on how they need you. It's when they need you, they now love you. Women, on the other hand, they first love you before they need you. So most men, when they meet a woman, she's just loving, loving. You think this is how it will end. When she loves you, she will start needing you. My credit is finished. You sir, this is not how we started. <laughs> He said, my phone is bad. <laughs> you said, I'm not working in night time. <laughs> when she loves you, she will start needing you. She said, you didn't call me. You didn't text me. I said, my body is paining me. You didn't ask me. Eh? The man didn't budget for all these things. Oh. <laughs> A woman first loves you before she needs you. All right, so, so counselor. So I told the guy, you can't marry this girl. Oh. She's not saved, though. Yeah, he said no, because the guy was going to go to America and he has dreamed to go. See, man, I know you like money and prosperity. Be careful. Don't, that can't that can be the only reason. If that comes along with it, oh, I understand. But see, you are setting a trap for yourself when you marry just for money. Because when you get that money, you find that you don't like that person. And I'm a pastor. I've seen this over and over again. Men that start like that, they divorce many, many times. Because they marry first for money. They get money. They divorce, they divorce that one after money has come. Then they marry for paper. Then they get paper. They divorce that one. Paper has come. Then it's when they are assisted. They are not looking for the person. They really, really... <laughs> mm, don't try it. I've seen too many of those casualties. As a woman, too, be careful. That's why as a woman, I have a book here. I you seven questions why women ask. Any man just say, I love you. You need to know what he... Say, ask him why. One of the reasons why. Why do you love me? <laughs> if he's stammering, then run. So there's a book here too. So, said, so please buy these books because I can't teach everything inside it. I remember we were doing book signing today after church. So I told him you can't marry this girl, and he went ahead and married her. In fact, he went. This, this is my right hand man, pastor. This guy was my right hand man, very my right hand right hand man who started ministry. He was the ministry before the ministry started, not even day one. It was before day one. He was our mom, my right hand man. He got married without me being present. In fact, not that not that I wasn't present. I wasn't even aware. Not that I wasn't present. That's not even the I wasn't aware he got married. It was months after he got married that I saw a picture. So even his parents were asking him that day during the wedding. Why is Pastor K not here? He said, ah, I traveled. He made an excuse for me. <laughs> One year after, the girl sent him text. She said, I can't continue this relationship. She called marriage relationship. <laughs> I said, that's what I saw. I saw that she didn't know what she was getting into. That's what I saw. And later we found out the reason why she was ending it was that she was now pregnant for somebody else. I said, I saw it. Cancer will save you. In the multitude of cancer, there is what? Saved. There are 10 C's. Every single person, you must get this book, Who Should I Marry? I dealt with 10 C's. You can't miss it if you get that thing right. And there's another one here titled 25 Wrong Reasons People Enter a Relationship. Ooh, it will help you screen yourself. The Bible says examine yourself. So you will check these 25 wrong reasons to make sure this is not the reason you are. Because you, you'll be amazed how your, your mind plays tricks on you. You think you love somebody, but you are marrying them for a wrong reason. And what I said in that book is that if you marry for the wrong reason, you have most likely married the wrong person. If you marry for the wrong reason, you have married what? The wrong person. Very important. There are two more books I'll talk about here. All the books are good. These ones are gift packs. They are called All Year Round. What I did in that book is to coach married people all year. 52 points for 52 weeks. Short advice. What you can be doing for your husband or wife for 52 weeks. So all year round, you'll be a great lover. Even the great players still need coaches. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's what you get. They will send you emails to remind you of 52 points. Every week, you have something you can do for your wife. My wife too wrote for the women. You have something you do for your husband. It's a good gift pack. Comes with a pet pin and other things. Lastly, on books. I'll talk about my best-selling book. Me and my wife wrote this book. It's our best-selling book. It's titled A to Z of Marriage. Pastor, that what we discovered was that, like I said, it won't come to you natural. When you tell a man, love a woman, and you tell a woman, love a man, it's very vague. What does, it, what does that mean? Love your wife. You say, mm, I love her. They have not been able to turn it into applicable steps. That's where the problem is. 
Most marriages that crash, I've never seen anybody enter marriage with a bad intention. Everybody enters with good intention. Nobody enters marriage with that. What's your dream of the marriage is for you to end in two years. Nobody's like that. Everybody enters with what? Great intention. It's the lack of the knowledge, lack of application. So, what me and my wife did in this book is that I coached the women to tell them what love means to a man in alphabetical order A to Z. My wife coached the men, tell them what love means to a woman, alphabetical order A to Z. So, for instance, A, I told women that, uh, my wife told women, no, no, my wife told women, yes, that A for men is acceptance. So, my wife coached women that men like acceptance. That's number one need, one of the number one needs of men, acceptance. Men like acceptance. If you are going to marry a man, you must first accept him. Why is this important for women? Because women are nurturers and fixers. Every time a woman is getting into a relationship with a man, she's making a mental note of all the things she wants to change about him. Men, I'm giving you the secret of women. They are planning all they will change about you. Say, this one, the way he's dressing, mm, I'll change it. This is trousers that are always too big. He will change it. This is teeth. It's not all level. We'll level it. <laughs> I'm telling you, women make everything better. No matter how the state something is, a woman is seeing it in a way it can be better. So it's, it's her instinct. She doesn't even know why, but it's her instinct. She comes and makes everywhere better. So when she's seeing you, she's just looking at you. Mm, this one who, who needs help. He's, I mean, he's help. I will help his life because <laughs> the way he's dressing, you know, good. The way he's spending his money, the way he's working. The way... So women have that tendency. And because women sometimes lack patience, they want to f- enforce that change quickly. Men lack acceptance. If you want to change a man, you change him by first accepting him. You don't confront him. Men are warriors. So you don't confront him face to face. No. Stay by his side. He prefers side by side communication. Those that were here yesterday, you understand? I mean, yes. You understand that? You that didn't come yesterday again. We explained all this in details and gave statistics. So men like side by side. So if you want to change a man, you send him, change him from the side, not from the front. If you confront him from the front, he's a warrior. For a carpenter, every problem is hammer and nail. Because that's all the tool he has. If you confront a warrior, his only reaction, his default mode, is to what? Fight. Whether you are right or wrong, you come to his front. He's a warrior. Men fight for everything they have in life. I get what I'm saying? Men, so he's a natural fighter. He's not like you as a woman. As a woman, it's not as if you don't fight for things. But you see, your own life is a bit different. Women, if you are, if you are good looking, you can survive in this life. If you know how to do pity face and pity voice, you will survive in this life. For a man, if you do pity face, they will even slap you. Men fight for everything they have. Men, am I correct? Because nobody send you. Men fight. That's why marketers know this. That's why marketers use women for marketing. You don't use men. If you use, if you use men, just you are in your office, two strange men are knocking at your door. Say, so what do you want? You are selling something. We're not buying. We're not buying anything. Please leave this place immediately. <laughs> two strange men in your door. <laughs> you lock door more. Say, please, out of here. But imagine two very beautiful ladies just knocking over here. Say, what are you selling? <laughs> two of you in the sun. Why are you in the sun? Please, please, please. Come in. <laughs> Come in. What are you selling? Okay, we don't need it, but let's buy two just to encourage you, young women. To encourage you. <laughs> are you get what I'm saying? So men are fighters. You don't confront them. Pastor, two of my, some of my staff were coming from the office to my house for a meeting. So there were three guys, one girl. They were coming to my house for a meeting. Their car broke down the road. So, the, the guys wanted to be gentlemen. Told the woman, go and sit in the car. So, the three of them came out and were trying to stop cars. <laughs> Nobody will stop for them. Say, hey, three men, they stop car for road. They are robbers, oh. These are robbers. This is the new thing they are doing now. <laughs> Nobody stopped for them. They borrowed themselves since. The three men went inside the car. The girl came out and stood on the road. Three cars stopped immediately. <laughs> are you here, somebody? So, men are fighters. If you want to change him, you don't confront him. You stand by his side. You stand by his side. Tell him, hey, honey, maybe your husband eats and makes loud noise. You want to change him. Don't come and tell him, use this man. You are disgracing yourself. You can't. Mm-mm. Tell the honey, I like the way you enjoy food. Ha, ah, you can enjoy your food. You are enjoying your food. This is why I like cooking for you. He will say, thank you. <laughs> then you tell him that when we go for Pastor Cosfini's uh, event, you know, we'll go for dinner. I say, don't eat like that. Oh. People will think you're a bushman. He will hear better like that. <laughs> acceptance men like that's why men like to go to bars men like to go to where people drink in a bar there's total acceptance even if you kill your mother and then I just kill somebody yesterday to say ha, ha, you're a bad guy give him one shot that's what men it's a no judgment zone <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Men like acceptance. The A for women, we taught the women that, I mean, taught the men rather, that A for women is attention. Women like attention. Everything women do is for attention. Women need it. They need attention. This is why their hair is long. This is why they paint all these colors. This is why they wear their clothes. Their clothes are designed for color, designed for attraction, designed for shape. They are looking for attention. Satan too knows this. That's why you notice that girls and club and all that, they are naked. It's attention. They are all looking for. It's a legitimate need. Just as Satan will pervert it. So as a husband or as a boyfriend, give your wife attention. For sometimes, for no reason, just go and sit with her. For no reason, go and check up on her. For no reason, call her. For no reason, be looking at her. Say, what's wrong? Say, nothing. Pastor says I should give you attention. <laughs> I'm just looking at you. <laughs> I do it to my wife all the time. I just go and be looking at her. Say, what's wrong? Say, nothing. I'm giving you attention. They say, you need attention. <laughs> so I'm here. You have my full attention. Just go and hang out with her in the parlor. Go and hang out with her in the kitchen. Go and have a bath with her. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say, eh? <laughs> When I come, we'll go into all these things, details. On the average, I have a bath with my wife. At least, if it's very busy with twice a week, we'll have a bath together. If it's busy. If it's not busy, we can have a bath every day, every week. We're always together. Always giving our, always giving our attention. Thank you for the three people clapping on that side. Your marriage will be sweet. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? Give her attention. Hey, then I'll do R if I get into what I'm going to share today. R, letter R, we taught the women that men, R for men is respect. Men like respect. Women don't understand it. They say, what do you mean by that? Is that women don't like respect? Yes, women also like respect. Even dogs need respect. Everybody needs respect. But that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about respect for men is their, is their love language, is their key to unlocking their heart. You see the example Pastor Mildred gave. God was so interesting. God told women to do the thing that they will find hardest to do, which is respect men. And that's the thing that men need the most. God also told men what, women, what they will find hardest to do, which is love. And that's what women need the most. Men like respect. Respect unlocks a man's heart. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Abigail in the Bible understood this. David was coming to kill Abigail's family. Abigail intercepted him on the way. Abigail knelt down to talk to him. Abigail called him Lord like ten times in one conversation. He turned David back. Turned him back by respect. And David never forgot her. The moment her husband died, David went to marry her. David was already married though, but his wife used to give him problem. His wife had disrespect for him. His wife is the one that was correcting him one day. He was dancing. The wife said, Sir, you are disgracing yourself. So when he met a woman that really respected him, he never forgot her. Collected her Instagram handle, collected her TikTok. <laughs> and was checking her status. The moment she updated obituary, <laughs> he slid into her DM. <laughs> he married her immediately. This means he was keeping tabs. Married her immediately. I call her the unforgettable woman. I have a message like that on my YouTube channel. The unforgettable man and the unforgettable woman. There's a way you can be as a woman, no man will forget you. There's a way you can be as a man, no woman will forget you. I'm telling you. That woman was the unforgettable woman. David ran to marry. I respect. Men like respect. You can tell a man or get a man to do anything if you tell him respectfully. Unfortunately for women, because women are impatient, women are, they feel deeply, so they just say the way their mind is. And you know, the way women communicate to women is not the way women communicate to men. Men have ego. It's very, they are very touchy. A man would do what's wrong just to make sure you don't control him. Many men tell me that I would rather do what's wrong than to allow this woman to tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I didn't make this up. This is real life. I'm a counselor. I'm, you, you, I, I don't know if you heard my profile, but I'm, I'm a certified counselor, both locally and internationally. I counsel people from everywhere in the world, everywhere in the world. And 99% of the time, and I kid you not, I can't make this up, 99% of the time in counseling sessions, when man and woman sit down together in my room or in my on online, the only, reason, the only complaint the man has is my wife doesn't respect me. 99% of the time. That's all. It's, men equate all their problems in their marriage to respect. That's why I say, woman, instead of you to be debating and joining feminism and be fighting nonsense, God gave you the key. He said, if you want this man to be obeying you, respect him. This is why the places that affairs flow easily is where respect flows easily. Boss and PA, there's natural respect. Boss and secretary. Boss and housemaid. Many housemaids wish clear out wife. Because the wife is talking to the husband like, John, John, you see when you're coming back home, are you okay, John? <laughs> but the housemaid will say, Oga, welcome, even if it comes 1 a.m. Secretary will say, thank you, welcome, sir. You, you, oh, you, sir, you need to adjust your tie, sir. But madam will say, see, you, do, you don't even know how to knock ties. You've been working since. See how you tie your tie, a whole grown man. <laughs> 
So his affection is moving to secretary. His affection is moving to PA. That's where affairs flow easiest because those women have the control, respect. And most wives don't think it's important. Because he's, he's, are we not married? Are we not mate? Is he, is he, is he, because you are seeing his weaknesses. He's respected everywhere else in the world, but you, you are seeing him in his weakest. That's why most women admire their own bosses. Most women admire their MD. Most women admire their pastor. Most women admire the men in front of them because they don't live with them. If you to marry your MD, you will treat him like you're treating your husband. If you marry your pastor too, you will see him finish too. It's the reason why you're respecting him now is because he's far. Nothing is wrong with your husband. Just respect him. That one you think about. You see, see my, this is my husband. He doesn't have work. Even this his income is too low. But see my MD. See the way he just works. See his suit. See, is somebody taking care of him? Take care of your own too. He will grow. Mm. Man, you send me. I'll put my account number. Man, you send me something. <laughs> to appreciate me. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying, sir? Respect the man. And his unconditional respect. He won't always behave respectfully. But that's what, that's what women think. Women think, if you behave respectfully, I will respect you. That's not what scripture says. It's unconditional respect. The same way he too is demanded to give you unconditional love. The instructions of God, like I told you, it won't come natural. It's not when you feel like. It's not when he's behaving respectfully. It's what you should give, whether he behaves it or not. Hmm. Do you know the way, God, whenever you come to God to complain about your spouse, do you know who God talks to? You. That's how God treats every case. If you come and say, my husband is wicked, God talks to you. Your husband is not here now. It's me and you. You and God talking. He can't talk to somebody that is not present. It's you who you talk to. So in 1 Peter 3, the one woman said, my husband is not behaving well. God said, with your good behavior, your husband is not obeying the word. You continue to obey the word that by your good behavior. I thought God would say I will knock him. No, of course I just continue. In fact, respect him more now. Be like daughter of Sarah. Kneel down for him. Say, respect him more. That's the only way to get him to change. When you come to God, it's you he talks to. My wife is not God will talk to you. He can't, your wife is not present now in the meeting. Somebody get what I'm saying? Respect. The hour for, the hour for women. We, say, we told men that women need romance. Mm. Women need what? Romance. Most men are too rigid. Say, so who has time for romance? Nee, this third country is too tough now. You see the economy. No time for all these things now. We are working. <laughs> Listen, Oga, we know life is tough. We know life is hard. Your job is not to make it harder. Those of you that were here yesterday, I explained to you how a woman's mind works, Abby. Why God said you need to cheer her up for one full year. If you didn't come yesterday again. So, women are grown in an atmosphere of fantasy. Women have fantasy. Your job as a man is not to bring her back to reality. Because some men think that's their work. So this thing you are watching is not, look, we must be real. <laughs> that is not your work, Oga. Your work is, you are not the chief reality officer. Your job is to fulfill her fantasy. That's your job. This is why you are hired. This is why she chose you. Because women grow up, we have the gift of fantasy. All their movies are fantasy based. Cinderella, Rapunzel. You lost your shoe. Somebody used your shoe. Come and find you. Lost your shoe now. Now eBay, you go see them. Then go sell them. Then go sell them. <laughs> Women grow with fantasy. So as a man, even though you, you have the gift of logic and reality, your job is not to bring her to reality. Your job is to help her fulfill her fantasy. Women will become super women if they're happy. See, your wife is like a scud missile. Your wife is a sophisticated piece of equipment. And the key to unlocking her powers is happiness. That's why they say go and cheer her up for one year. If you make your wife happy, she, will bring, she has many arsenals, many weapons she has not brought out. And the only thing that unlocks those things is happiness. If she's happy, she will bring out the weapon of prayer. You will see things start moving. She has many. That's why if you're married to my head, there's a book titled um, Prayer Journal, Kaye Prayer Journal, my wife. This is the prayer she prayed over me that is making my life move like this. <laughs> Somebody gets what I'm saying. So if you marry the one, you must get this book on prayer. So you make her happy. Fulfill her fantasy. I get what I'm saying. Women like romance. And many, if you're a young man here, don't go. <laughs> hey, it's very important. See, romance is not expensive. Romance simply means doing the ordinary things in a special way. That's all it is. Doing the ordinary things in what? A special way. It's not expensive. You don't need so much money to do say, oh, eh, me, I don't have money. How will I do romance? No. Romance is doing the same. It might just be holding her hand. How much is that one? 
It's free. You are going somewhere with her. Just hold her hand. Some men say, I don't like to hold I want to swing my hand. I want to swing my hand. Are you a soldier? When they are recruiting for army, where were you? It's now you want to form swinging hand. Say, no, I don't like holding hand. I'm just... I told you it won't come to you naturally. The reason many marriages are failing, they are trying to be who they are. Say, me, I don't like holding hands. Mm -mm. When you say you will do, start to do. Hold a hand. It can be small things. You, doing the simple things in a special way. You want to buy her perfume. She's complaining that she needs a new perfume. Or her perfume. Almost. See, by the way, men, women talk indirectly. So that's another tip you need to learn. Women talk what? Women never talk. In the world of women, the, the, the planet they came from is wrong if you need perfume to say, I need perfume. That's not how women talk. Women say, all my perfumes are finishing. She has talked to you. She has talked to you. <laughs> but many men just think, okay, that's just a statement. No, it's information. Ha, ah, this is my phone. It's old. And it's not, I don't even sure it's working well. She has spoken to you. She has spoken to you. I get what I'm saying. <laughs> so, it's doing the simple things in a special way. So she needs perfume. Don't just take her to a boutique or somewhere and say, nah, see different perfume here. Pick anyone you like, I'll pay. Mm -mm, don't be that dry. <laughs> Women give you points when you notice things she didn't officially tell you. When you can read her indirect message, she scores you points for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you can notice what she likes without her telling you, she knows you're paying attention. So you should know the kind of perfumes. She, this is the, see, they're not expensive. It's just a little effort. Know the kind of perfumes she likes, the fragrances she likes. Or even if it's just a new release of perfume. Women like anything that is new. So you may never know what she likes, but there's a new release of perfume. Just buy it. Buy it. Don't just bring it to her. I say, Henny, <laughs> I saw the perfume. I just buy it for you. Or you start to spray. <laughs> Don't be that dry. <laughs> Don't be that dry. Buy the perfume. Wrap it. Not in camouflage color. Wrap it in something feminine nice. And hide it somewhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see? It's the same perfume you wanted to buy that other men will buy and just carry. But you, you are putting some effort. You wrap it. You see, in the world of men, men don't even like you to wrap their gift. Because you know, you're wasting my time. I will first unwrap it. You see, men like the project, but women like the process. You see? See, the what's causing problem in marriage is that men are trying to love women like men. And women are trying to love men like women. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. That's what's causing problem. And that's what I'm dealing with today. You must love a woman like a woman. Don't love her. What happens is that men are giving women what men like. And women are giving men what women like. <laughs> they said, you know, when, before a man marries you, or before he has slept with you, he doesn't mind touching you. He touches you a lot. He likes to hug you, hold your hand, hold you. Because then, he's, he, because for men, love is largely physical. So he's trying to express. The moment he starts sleeping with you, maybe you're married or you're fornicating, which you should not be doing. You will notice that his touching you will reduce strictly to sexual touching. Because he has already touched you now. So he's not looking for touching your hand or your shoulder. He will only touch you in your private parts. He will just hold you like this. He's project driven. I'm telling you. And it totally irritates women. Now, I'm speaking in the context of marriage. And I believe most women are married. So you notice your, your husband just, just only third time touches you. You know you. Straight to the point. <laughs> just hold it. And irritates women. On the other hand, when women want to touch their husband, he's touching his head. Touching his shoulder. And that one too irritates men. <laughs> because you're scratching my hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of something. You're disturbing me. There's only one place men like to be touched. Another one, don't touch me. I'm busy. You know what's happening? Men are touching women where men like to be touched. Women are touching men where women like to be touched. So all you need to do is to exchange it. I say, man, learn to touch your wife's hair. Touch her shoulder. Rub her back. Hug her for no reason. Cuddle her. If you know you want to sleep with her in the night, do all this cuddling in the day. <laughs> then you as a woman... Don't bother to touch your husband's head or whatever. Touch him in the only place he likes to be touched. 
he will hardly complain. I said that to say that men are loving women like men. Women are loving men like women. Love the way the person receives the love. So, romance. So, wrap it. Hide it somewhere. If she's the kind of person that is cooking a lot, hide in the kitchen. She has a car, hide it in her car. Hide in her wardrobe. Hide it somewhere. And one day she will do something. She'll just find something wrapped. And there will be a note on it that will say, I know you will find it the way I found you. <laughs> It's ordinary perfume, but the work you put in into delivering the perfume. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That's all love is. That's what romance is. That little effort. It makes no meaning to men. Men, I don't even need to hide the, give me the perfume direct. Don't even wrap it because if you wrap it now, I have to first unwrap it, which is work. Men like the project. Women like the process. So you have to, what I'm saying is that you have to go out of your own natural instincts. Your marriage can't work if you want to love a woman the way you think. You must go out of yourself to love her the way she wants to be loved. It doesn't, romance doesn't cost money. It's just thoughtfulness. The first time my wife, I changed my wife's phone, then whenever we were married, we were just dating. She was in Unilag doing her master's. We were in a relationship. Her phone was bad. Again, she didn't ask me for phone. She just kept saying, oh, her phone is bad. Her phone is not going. Her phone is having a problem. She has already spoke. And me, being a relationship coach, I was already well schooled. But I couldn't afford a brand new phone. Because I, I didn't have money then. I couldn't afford a brand new phone. I couldn't even afford a fairly used phone. I could only afford an unfairly used phone. <laughs> no joke. The phone I could afford was what? Unfairly. You know all those phones that you buy phone separate? Buy charger separate? <laughs> buy battery separate? Unfairly used that all the numbers are not even showing well. That's what I could buy. But you see, I didn't go and meet her and buy it and say, hey, manage this way. You know that money no day. You know things no level now. Just manage this perfume. No, I'll be this uh, phone. Don't do that. If you're a young man here struggling or starting life, don't go and tell a woman that. She already knows you don't have money. Don't go and say, no, you know, you know I don't have money. Don't say that. Don't reinforce the fact. Because <laughs> men don't know how to communicate. Because men, we are logical and we are literal. So I don't have money, people go and say I don't have money. No, 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 no. If a woman already knows you don't have money, she can see now. She knows you don't have money. Don't come and reinforce that. Instead, she wants something she can believe. So talk about the future. Talk about what you can do, not what you are doing. Is somebody getting it? Don't go and present yourself and say, manage me. No. Say, hey, I'm buying you this unfairly used phone, but trust me, the next phone I will buy for you that a time is coming, I will take you to any store you like, and you will pick any phone you like. You are giving out a fairly useful no? but you are talking about the future. People can challenge your present, but nobody can challenge your future. Are you here, somebody? Nobody can challenge what? Your future. Hallelujah. So, it's, it's very important that you, that you present yourself. Oh, I bought that phone, but you see, I couldn't go and present that on fairly useful like that. Instead, she went to watch a show in Muson Center, comedy show. She went to use the bathroom. I brought out her SIM card from her old phone. Put it. Put the this new phone. Put her SIM card in the new phone I bought for her. A fairly used phone, but put it. She got to the, her hostel in the evening. Something was ringing from her bag. She said, what's that? She said, that's your bag. But she said, that's not my ringtone. They said, that was your bag. So she opened the bag, and she picked the call and found out that I changed her phone. She was more happy about how I changed the phone than to notice that it was an unfairly used phone. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That's all romance is. Doing the ordinary things, but doing it in a special way. And, it's, and for men, it doesn't come natural. I can go on and on. It doesn't come what? Natural. But the key, the key is to go out of yourself. There are many things that cause differences between a man and a woman. Many things that cause differences. This book is a good book to get. We're going to do signing after. A to Z of marriage. But there are many things that cause differences. Part of it is your background. Both of you came from two different backgrounds. That will cause differences. What's the number one reason why people divorce? It's called irreconcilable differences. And that is fighting the agreement that I spoke earlier about. Irreconcilable differences. They said adultery is not the reason people divorce. Um, um, violence is not the reason people divorce. They said number one reason is that irreconcilable. That's that unwillingness to address the difference. 
And the difference is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. The difference is necessary for us to work well together in synergy. The difference is important. If two, if two hot-tempered people marry, they can't, they can't survive. If two strong-willed people marry, they can't survive. So usually opposites attract. Somebody that is strong would mind somebody chilled. Somebody that is outgoing would mind somebody quiet. Somebody that is scatters would mind somebody organized. But at the beginning, that thing will attract you. If you are scattered, you'll be attracted by how organized she is. This guy is so organized. Everything is just in one place. Everything is like, ah, I like her. She too in her mind, even though she's quiet, she says, I like him. I like the way he can talk anyhow. <laughs> Me, I can't talk. Because quiet people, they talk, or just like they talk in their mind. So when they see somebody that can talk in their mouth, hey, she says, I like him. He can just talk. He's bold. He knows everybody. You will start by liking it after a while to start frustrating you. Must you talk to everybody? <laughs> must you always sit quiet? Hallelujah. So you must go out of your natural self to start being a good lover. And the key to that, because I'm, I'm closing now, the key to that is allowing the Holy Spirit walk in your life. You must yield to the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you won't survive. It's going to be tough because as a natural person, you want to do what you like, but the Holy Spirit will help you go out of your way. If somebody gets what I'm saying, yielding to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to take one minute to pray because I'm already done. We're going to take one minute to pray because if I don't leave anything here with you, I want to leave that with you. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. You can't do marriage right without him. He's our counselor. He's our helper. He wants to do life with you. You can't do marriage. There are times he will tell you, don't shout back at your husband. Small things have broken marriages. Though. If you see what breaks marriage sometimes, it's not, the, it's not the big things. It's the small things. God just tell you, apologize. You say, but I don't, I'm not the one wrong. God say, I know. But just apologize. It takes the Holy Spirit to melt your heart to do so. Yesterday, my wife misplaced her AirPods. This iPhone. She's, she's careful with every other thing, but she misplaces that thing every day. I've bought like three or four. That's the only thing in this life she misplaces. She loses it every, every time. So this last one she has, I went to London or so, I got somebody to go, they wrote her name on it. It was special. Then we got to Asaba. She was on, looking for it on the bed. She was very frustrated. She couldn't find it. In my mind, I said, this girl don't lose this thing again. And I almost wanted to tell her, you are too careless with this thing. But the legal said, don't say it. So I taught it in my mind. But I didn't say it. It wasn't because I was smart. In my flesh, the natural thing I wanted to do was say, must you always misplace this thing? This, this, is, not the, this is the thought of, she always misplaces them. On the plane, no, she always misplaces them. So I was about to say, you can't keep buying airports every year. But the legal said, mm -mm. so I just thought it in my mind. I said, mm -mm. The next day, she found it on the bed somewhere, the next day. And she said, this thing frustrated me so much yesterday that, and if you had said, and she, she said, I know you were, you wanted to say that I always misplace my airports. And she said, if you had said it, I would have cried. She was at the brink of crying that yesterday. And she said, if I had said it, she would have cried. There's no way I would have known that information. If not that the Holy Ghost told me, don't say anything. This is what makes marriage work, guys. It's not by your power. There are times I get home from work. My wife will serve me food. And the Holy Ghost will say, give her your fish. I'll say, Holy Ghost, you're not aware. She's the one that cook this food. <laughs> All the fish are under her command. She can do with them as she will. It's not this one they gave me that I should give her. And besides, she didn't even say she want fish. While I'm busy arguing with the Holy Ghost, my wife will say, honey, give me out of your fish now. I'll say, ah, and I thought, in the world of women, that you thought is zero. <laughs> you must do. There are times I've been in the office, they'll go say, call your wife now and check up on her. I'll say, let me finish this chapter. Or let me finish this meeting. Let me finish this. Then she will call me. I'll say, I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. One time we were in the car. We had something we didn't agree about. So when the car I was sitting in front, she was sitting at the back, and there were people in the car, so she was sending me, sending me a text, a chat, that this thing I did, she wasn't happy with it. I made sure she said, the Holy Ghost told me what to reply. 
Just say, ah, oh, sorry, baby. Oh, sorry, baby. The Holy Ghost told me exact words to write. But me being a man and a teacher and a relationship coach, I say, if I explain to her well and tell her well, she will understand why I did what I did. Many of us are fighting to win argument instead of win agreement. The moment I sent what I sent, it made things worse. She replied heavily too intense. Later, some days or weeks after, we were talking and she said, that time I sent you that message the first time, all I expected you to say was, oh, I'm sorry, baby. She used the exact words. I just faced my front like I didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> it was later I preached on the pulpit. you heard it for the first time. I just born the Holy Ghost. What's that going on? <laughs> he gave me the exact words. So I want to pray for us today. That's all I want to do today. Whether you're single or married, you need to yield to the Holy Spirit. Can we stand? Why I just play something. I'm about to close. Just permit me this extra five minutes. I just feel I should minister this. The Holy Spirit. We mend homes today. Honey, please come. Zubrada baka sata babroda bosete. Ika bola di saka babla de usoko babredisa. Please just take one minute to pray. If you are single, the same thing. You need the Holy Spirit. He will guide you. He will tell you when you should not go ahead in some relationships. He, he will save you from time wasters. And if you are married, please, if you are not sitting with your spouse, this is a good time to please go towards your spouse for one minute. Zubra da Kasita. Please pray, everyone. Even if you are married, the Holy Spirit, help me to be a better husband. You can't be a better husband in your own native wisdom. No, you can't be a better wife with your native wisdom. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Can I see those that are married in the house? Please, if you are married in the house. If you are married in the house. Please, if your husband or wife is in this hall, go towards him or her. If you are not sitting by them. Please, every husband and wife, hold your wife. Or hold your husband. No, I don't mean hold her hand. I mean hold face to face. Hold face to face, not side by side. Hold like this. Hold like this. Some people are not seeing. Camera, show again, please. This is what I said to do. Hold, hold your wife. Hold your husband. Talk to your wife. Talk to your husband for one minute. Just tell him anything. Tell her anything. Talk. You need to talk. I'm watching you. This supervision. Yeah, some people are not talking. If you have offended your wife, if she's angry with you, just tell her you're sorry. The Holy Spirit is here. It's easy now. Just tell her you're sorry. If you have offended your husband, tell him you're sorry. Hold yourself. Whisper to each other's ears. I want you to hold yourself. Cuddle. Hold yourself so that you can whisper to each other's ears. I don't want anybody to hear what you're saying. So hold well. Ahead. Hold like that so that you can whisper. Just talk to yourselves. Just... If you, if you have not offended her in recent time, just tell her what you like about her. Tell him what you like about him. I want you to do it now. Do it now. If your spouse is in the hall. Do it now. Do it now. Just tell him or her something. Hey, that thing you did last year is still paining me. That thing you did last week is still paining me. But I want to forgive. I want, I'm trusting God to, to let me. I'm not joking. No, this is important. It's an important part of this service. It's important. Hold well. I want you to be whispering to each other's ear. Face to face holding, please. Face to face holding. Face to face holding. Talk to each other. If you have nothing to apologize about, then just tell him or her what you like about him or her. If there's something your wife or husband have been telling you to do for him or her, this is a good point to say, I will try to do it. I'll try to be better. I'll try to be better. I'm not joking. This is where in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. This is important. It's important instruction. Zubrada. If you're single, you can still pray by yourself too. We're still in the atmosphere of prayer. Zubrada Bakasa. Hold your spouse like that. We're doing something spiritual. Mambrada Bakaso Taba Brada Basika. If you have nothing to say, then pray for your partner then. If you have nothing to say to him or her, Speak a word of prayer over him or her. Speak a word, any prayer you like. But I want your mouth to be moving. This is a prophetic exercise, please. So don't, don't, don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Pray for that man. Pray for that woman. Pray for her, him or her. Zubrada Baki Sata. Lastly, I want you to also kiss your spouse right now. I'm acting under the anointing, please. Do not disobey the Holy Spirit. Please kiss, kiss, kiss. Pastor, you're not kissing. Sorry. 
Kiss your spouse. Kiss your spouse. Some people have not kissed since they got married. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let me just pray for everyone before I step down. Sorry for us taking your time. But I'm just trying to do what the Holy Spirit laid in my heart quickly to get out of here. Father, I pray for every single that is under the sound of my voice. I pray that they will not miss the mark. These ones will not marry wrong. You will prepare them. You will package them. And you will pair them. In the name of Jesus. This person, this young man, this young woman will be a gift to his or her spouse. They will marry for destiny, not just for money. They will marry to honor you, not just to honor themselves. And Father, I pray that their eyes will be open. They will see their husband. They will see their wives. In the name of Jesus. I pray that you do a quick work this year. By the time we come again, there will be many marriages testimony in the name of Jesus. There will be many testimonies of marriages in the name of Jesus. Those that are in a wrong relationship, God will open your eyes. And for those that are married, I decree whatever is standing between both of you, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. You will get closer. You will grow fonder of each other. Your love will get deeper in the mighty name of Jesus. What God has joined together, nothing will put us under. I decree that the Holy Ghost will melt your heart for each other. In the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, I heard that um, tomorrow is your pastor's wedding anniversary. Hallelujah. With his permission, with the authority over this house, I also like to just speak a word of prayer over the both of them. Please, if you don't mind, can you come? on stage. Both of you, please, just come so that I'll, I'll pray and step down you take over from there. This is how you are clapping. Wow. 